It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Niners and the Buccaneers, next on Madden Football. We're about 20 miles from the Gulf of Mexico at Raymond James Stadium, just north of downtown Tampa, as we bring you the NFL on EA Sports. Good to be in the booth with Greg Olson. I'm Mike Tirico. Greg, this is a passing league. You know that from your days. It's evolved even more into a game in the air. And boy, do we have a couple of quarterbacks who know all about moving their team via the pass. Yeah, and I think we're going to see this ball thrown early and often throughout the game. And anyone who loves offensive football, this is certainly a treat. And you said it, Mike. This league has turned more and more with each passing season into a passing league. If you can't throw, if you can't generate points through the air and explosive plays, it is going to be very difficult to compete and win week in and week out in today's modern NFL. The kicker, Chase McLaughlin, will get this one started. And off we go from Tampa. Debo Samuel going to get a chance to return it. And a solid run back there. He'll get this out past the 30-yard line. Here come the 49ers, and they are led by Brock Purdy. You know the story, taken last in the 2022 draft, the last two seasons, he has led the Niners deep in the playoffs, and it's his third season, Greg, as the QB for San Francisco. Mr. Irrelevant. Well, I think it's safe to say, Mike, he has been anything but irrelevant since arriving in the NFL, and he is living proof. It doesn't matter if you're drafted first overall, or in his case, with the very last pick. What does matter is what you do with the opportunity once it's given to you. Nothing real flashy about his game. He simply gets the job done, and that's exactly what his team is counting on him today over these next 60 minutes. Well, they try to get the run game started here early on this drive, Mike, and they're just going to have to do a better job up front. There's really nowhere for this ball carrier to go. You never want to lose yards on first down, but that's exactly the case here. On second down, Purdy. Oh, and this one's going to wind up incomplete. That's one you'd think he'd be able to corral. He can't find the handle, and it's going to lead to a third down. He decides to go with this safe throw and throws it well short of the sticks. And at this level, Mike, you just can't miss layups like that. So Kittle comes in motion. Third down. Purdy. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Remember what they told us, Mike, leading up to this game. They said it is so critical for us to find success, especially on third down. We want to maintain possession, extend these drives. Well, the first crack comes up, and they fail through the air, and they have to regroup and be able to have better success throughout the remainder of this game. Oh, but he cannot get away. Great job down there to hold him to a short return. Now, following the punt return, we have an injured player on the field. Not something you want to see in the opening minute of the game. The drive begins at the 20. Here's first and 10. Right to the air, it's Mayfield. That is caught by McMillan. And they'll get about half of what they needed. It's a pickup of five and sets up second and five. The receiver thought he had a nice soft spot in that zone coverage, and he settles down to give a nice target to the quarterback. But the defense had eyes on him the entire time. Secure rally tackle prevents that from turning into a big play. They'll run with the third-year man. It's Rashad White. He makes one man miss, but stopped quickly as they hold him to a gain of one. Here's a third down and four. Here comes Otten in motion. 
out of the shotgun. Mayfield. That's caught left side by Arden. And he puts his head down and he picks up the first down. Quarterback knew the blitz was coming. You could hear him pre-snap communicating with the guys up front, but sometimes it's just the perfect defensive call and there weren't enough blockers to account for all the rushers. He had to get the ball out quick and thankfully for him, he got it out just in the nick of time. Baker going to hand it to White. And he'll manage to get this ahead for a pickup of five. Throwing on second down, Mayfield. And he's down on the other side of midfield. Mark him at the 48-yard line. Nice first down pick up there by Jalen McMillan. And, Mike, as he tries to find his role in this Bucks offense, I think a lot of his opportunities are going to come inside at that slot position. Not only his ability to find soft spots and have good instincts to get himself open and uncover, but also the quickness to win man-to-man. -man. And that combination is going to get him a lot of targets Remember, he had five receiving touchdowns each of the last two seasons back in college. On play action, Mayfield. He'll air one out for Palmer. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. They told us this week they were going to try to come out fast and... Tell you what, that's exactly what they did. Put immediate pressure on this secondary and let them know, hey, all game long today, you better defend every blade of grass because we're coming out firing. And even though that ball falls incomplete, it goes a long way in setting up the rest of this game plan as the game unfolds. They need eight as they come up for third down. From the gun, it's Mayfield. He'll take a shot here, back of the end zone. That one is batted away, incomplete. No separation that time, tightly defended. It brings up fourth down. So I like the aggressiveness of the call, but as the rest of the game unfolds, Mike, there needs to be better overall execution. A little bit cleaner. Next thing you know, they're gonna hit some of those big shots. They will get away from that one, and they're going to have tremendous field position. This ball hits and goes out of bounds. They'll break the huddle. Coming up now for first and ten. On the ground is Mason. And a nice run there. He'll be stopped just shy of a first down. A pickup of not. Really nice job by the interior of this offensive line. It typically just takes one guy to distort the defense to give the back enough room to operate. And that's exactly what they did here. And it led to a big game. An enviable spot to operate from. Here's second in inches. On the ground, here's the fourth round pick from the April draft. He is net and dropped. Good defense. Loss of a couple on that play. You can see the running back. He's waiting patiently for that cutback lane to open, and it just never did. Great job by the defense, continuing to string that play out sideways, and they're able to take him down for a loss. They'll run. This is Mason. And it looks like he's going to have that first down. He will, not by a whole lot, but he's got enough. They convert on third down. In real time from up here, Mike, I couldn't tell whether or not he got it at first glance, but I think after seeing the replays we have up here, it looked like he and his blockers got just enough, and they're going to be able to keep this drive alive. Here's Purdy on first and ten. That's to the first-round rookie from Florida, Ricky Pearson. They're going to get this all the way up close to the 40-yard line. 
Recognizing the blitz is just the first step in the process for a quarterback understanding who you can account for with the protection and then who you can't account for. That's where your hot receiver comes in. He points to his receiver who the defender they're hot off of. That guy comes, gets the ball out of his hand, and results in a completion. A run. And here's Mason. And nothing on that one. Back to the line of scrimmage. And that is it. I give an effort by this runner, Mike, just to get back to the line of scrimmage. I think most backs around the league, that play would have resulted in a loss. But not this guy. Continued to fight, continued to do everything he could to prevent the loss, but it still stopped for no gain. Purdy now on second down. That's into the hands of Jordan Mason. And he's going to be dropped after a pickup of about five. Third and six. Throwing from the gun is Purdy. And that is incomplete. Great pass rushers live for third down, especially when they know the offense has to be one-dimensional. And this is a great example here, Mike. They can just pin their ears back and go. They know there is no threat for run. It is a must-pass situation. And for this offense, they're lucky it didn't result in a sack. Turn forthcoming. It's a touchback, and we come out to the 20 yard line. They'll come up here first and 10. They'll start this on the ground, and here's White, and he'll get four here up to the 24-yard line. Here's second and six. They motion the slot man left. A second down throw from Mayfield. That pass complete to the veteran, Sterling Shepard. 15 yards through the air. Good for a Buccaneers first down. Do a nice job there to move the chains early in this drive, but now as they approach midfield, continue to keep your foot on the gas. Don't get conservative. Don't start sitting on the ball. Cross midfield and go. Anytime you find yourself on your opponent's side of the field, you have to be thinking points. Slot man in motion left. On first and ten, here's Baker. He'll find his running back, White. And he's not going to get too far tackled after a gain of just a yard. All right, so there's really three areas that a modern NFL running back has to excel at. Number one, the traditional handoffs. Number two, you have to be excellent and reliable in pass protection. And maybe bigger than all of them, you have to be at least serviceable out of the backfield in the passing. White, first down and much more. That was a big time run by White. 53 yards. Wow, I mean, he's going to be disappointed he wasn't able to take that all the way, but that's still a heck of a run. In the end, after a good tackle to save the touchdown, they're still going to be set up with first and goal. Ball sitting at the seven. First and goal. He'll run with White to the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Now some movement up front. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time here today. The 
task a bit tougher as they face second and goal. Now Mayfield. And he finds a seam and takes it down to the three. These are the play calls, Mike, that offensive coordinators use to just get their quarterback and their passing game into some sort of rhythm. Easy pitch and catch, get the ball out of his hand, see a completion. These typically, as the game goes on, lead to bigger and bigger gains. Throwing here on third and over. Blitz gets there quickly and down he goes. Sometimes you just have to know when the play is over and live to play another down. He has pressure coming right at him. And instead of just throwing the ball away, he tries to escape, he tries to get creative, and he ends up losing a lot more yards than he should have. On fourth down, Chase McLaughlin in for the Bucks. This from 30 yards out. McLaughlin's kick is good. And the Bucks will take a 3-0 lead. And I think this is going to end up being considered a successful drive, Mike. I think, obviously, you would have loved to see them come down and convert and score a touchdown. But at the very least, they needed to come away with three. They were able to do that and take a lead on that field goal. So 3-0 our score, and we are set for the dynamic kickoff. On the return, it's Ronnie Bell. And they'll be set up well as he is past the 35-yard line. And 10 now from the 36. So Kittle comes in motion. First and 10. 30. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. We'll try again here. Second and ten. So Kittle comes in motion. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Just can't seem to get anything going on. Every ensuing snap, they just continue to go backwards and backwards and backwards. You've got to find a way on first and second down to stay ahead of the chains so third down is not so daunting. So backed up after the sack, and now it's third and long. From the gun, it's Purdy. And with a flat down, he goes down. They get him for the sack. And that flag is probably on the offense as well. Just a lone field goal in the first quarter of play. 3 0 is our score. Pull up more from Tampa after this. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now, as he'll take this a yard or two into his own end zone. Now, fair catch, signal four, and made here at about the 43-yard line. Yeah. 
So they come to the line for first down and 10. Mayfield. Throwing it right into the hands of his running back. They're going to work this down inside the 45. First down, it's White. Gets to the edge at the 30. What a run, he brings it to the red zone. Taken down inside the 20 yard line. There's a combination of footwork and vision. His ability to kind of weave through traffic and understand where the holes were. It's a really nice job working through some bodies and picking up a big game. So they move inside the 20, first and 10 at the 18. Throwing is Mayfield. This one is caught by Shepard. Nice job here by the defense. Did a good job just covering up everything for the most part. So once this ball was caught, really didn't have much of a choice but to just head out of bounds and pick up a modest game. Here's a second and six. That's Palmer, the man in motion. On second down, Baker. He'll throw it left and has his running back. And it'll be a short pickup that's not enough for the first down. Third and a yard. They'll try to run for it. Here's White. And the Bucks have a first and goal forthcoming. Takes this down to the five-yard line. Simple play to call, but complex to execute. A toss play is beautiful, Mike, when a team hits it like they just did. We can see why they're a fan in the toss. Healthy game, and they pick up the first down. Out of the pistol, it's Mayfield. taken down defense came out in a soft zone and I think it caught the quarterback a little off guard he was trying to attack them downfield by the time he was able to get through his progression to his check down he ran out of time and that's all the pass rush needed to get into the backfield and bring him down so push back to the 11 yard line for second and goal here comes Otten in motion. A give, and here's White. And he's fighting to try to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will not do it. This is going to be a loss of a yard. With how fast they were all over that play, you almost wonder, Mike, was there a pre-snap tell? Did they know that play was coming? Because I'll tell you, that defense was on it from the start. So the last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal. Here's Mayfield. A short one there to Otten. When you're willing to throw the ball short of the sticks on third down, you know what that tells me, Mike? The decision to go for it on fourth down has already been made. If you're able to pick it up with yards after the catch, great. But if not, it's a fourth and short, and you give yourself a realistic shot of converting on this fourth down. He'll go. It's right. And he's not going to get there. They stopped him at the goal line. It's a turnover on down. And here we have a real gutsy call here, Mike, early in this game offensively. I think you're giving up a surefire field goal attempt. But at the same time, you're demonstrating to your players, hey, offense, I have a lot of trust in you. And let's see if they have this same approach as the rest of this game plays on. Set to go now on first and ten.
from his end zone. Purdy. He'll complete this one. That's Debo Samuel. And that will give them some space. Moving it all the way past the 40-yard line. This defense just gets punched in the mouth on that one, Mike. And it just seemed from up here that not everyone on defense was on the same page. And the offense was able to take advantage of it. The defense has to clean things up here in a hurry. Because if they don't, they could be in for a long day. Throwing on first down is Purdy. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. Really nice job there by the defense defending the middle of the field. That is the most valuable real estate on the field. They know every single offense is trying to attack the defense between the hashes. So give credit. They took away all the throwing lanes, and that ball falls incomplete. And they're going to work this down inside the 45. Following the completion, we'll get a stoppage here for an injured player. Athletic training staff looking at him. So we'll step aside. works out of the pistol. That's complete to Mason. He's able to get away from one man, but those reinforcements, they got there quick. Take him down behind the line. I think this play is a direct result of his film study. He knew exactly where that ball was going before the play was snapped, and that play recognition, man, it separates a lot of guys in this league and results in a negative play. Here's Purdy again. Into the hands of Pearsall on the right side. Defense does a nice job here initially using zone coverage to take away the middle of the field. That's the most valuable real estate in football. Quarterback gets off his first read, sees some openings to the sideline, and him and his receiver are able to connect. Try to pick this one up on the ground. A pickup there of 13. It's good for a Niners first down. Up until that run, this first half, it's kind of been tough sledding here for this run game. They'd love to see him get going. That last big pickup's going to go a long way. First and ten. They'll motion over Sandy. On first and ten, Purdy. A short one there, caught by Kittle. And they'll get about half of what they needed. It's a pickup of five and sets up second and five. So the hope is when you call these underneath drag routes, you're trying to have your tight end come out the backside of the defense in space. So when you put the ball on him early, it leads to big yards after the catch. In this case, they don't get the real big play they were hoping for, but they'll definitely take it. Samuel has it working in the middle. And this drive's going to continue. He's taken down, but they are set up with first and goal. Really nice job here by the quarterback, understanding what did he need to pick up a fresh set of downs. In this case, that underneath drag route was all it took. Get the ball into the hands of your receiver. Pick up the first down. A run on first and goal. He's going to lose yardage. How about the defense? Standing up in the red zone. They'll mark it at the 10. I'd like to see that running back be a little bit more decisive with his cut, Mike. You can see he was a little hesitant. And once you're late making that decision, you just kind of get strong laterally. Great job there by the defense. And he has no choice but to take that loss. On second down, Curry. That's to the end zone, but they can't connect. And it's incomplete. Goes without saying, like, you have to be smart with the ball, especially down here in the red zone. You're already in scoring position. 
I understand they're trying to come away with the touchdown, but at the very least, come away with three. Worst case scenario is you turn the ball over and you come away with nothing. Third and goal. Purdy. And that's going to wind up uncomfortable out of the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. They let a golden opportunity slip away on that one. That's the matchup that they wanted. They just couldn't quite capitalize it. On fourth down, it's Jake Moody time for the Niners. This is about as short as you can get. Moody's kick is good. And the Niners will tie the game at three apiece. It's always a little bit of a letdown, Mike. You find yourself deep in the red zone and you have to settle for a short field goal like that. In this case, he's able to put it through and they get three. So the field goal draws us even. It is now 3-3 as the kick's away. On the return is Sean Tucker. Nice job by the return team as he takes it across the 30-yard line. The Bucks offense running back Rashad White ready for this next possession. And as a play caller, when you've got a guy who's running like this, you lean on him and your offensive line. He's had big opening after big opening and big numbers in this first half. Here's first and ten. The drive begins with a run by White. And that one is closed down in the backfield. What a defensive play. Knifing it, dropping him for the loss. The speed and the get-off by the big interior defensive tackle, Mike. I mean, he got through there so fast, he almost took the handoff himself. After the loss of three, it is second and 13. Here comes White on the toss right. And a good tackle out wide. We'll hold him to a gain of just three. It is third and ten. Out of the shotgun, Mayfield. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. So the hope is your one-third down conversion from really jump-starting a possession that ultimately leads in points. But after that third down incompletion, kind of throws a wrench into those plans. Here's Trenton Gill now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now, fair catch called, and he's going to take it out beyond the 25-yard line. They'll motion the tight end right. On play action, here's Purdy. And that one is complete along the boundary. Good job of getting those feet in bounds. The best guys I've been around, Mike, they have a sense where they can see the ball, but they can feel the sideline. And that's kind of an innate sense that these guys have that allows them to concentrate and secure the catch and ensuring that both feet remain in bounds. Throwing on second down is Purdy. And it'll be a short pickup that's not enough for the first down. Three three, our score. Two minutes to go in this first half. Greg and I back from Tampa after a time. We 
and he too here's Purdy he's got his man right side it's complete a game there of 10 yards first down 49ers and that's an important conversion not only because it keeps their offense on the field and now they can go down and see if they can steal some late points but either way worst case scenario Mike if you're the offense here, you want to possess the ball going into halftime. Don't give your opponent a chance to go down and score on you. So big pickup there. Now we'll see if they can turn it into some points. Second down and eight. Purdy going to put it up again. He gets it to Samuel. Left side. Receiver just finds himself in a really nice groove. And there's these weird times in the game, Mike, where it just seems like every ball comes your way. Every play they call, you're wide open. And you just find yourself in one of those grooves that athletes talk about. So they got to continue to ride the hot hand because right now on that field, there's no mistaking who it is. He's got his man. Completes a Pearson. And he's going to have the first down as he gets out of bounds. And he stopped the clock as well. This is a great example of where just having situational awareness is so critical in the huddle. When every one of those receivers, Mike, breaks the huddle and go line up, they've got to know where that first down marker is. If your route calls, get by it, secure the catch, and bring up a fresh set of downs. Back into the hands of the fullback. He's going to have the first down as they move into field goal range here at the 25-yard line. There's this misconception out there, Mike, that in the NFL, you have to run the same amount of run plays as you do pass plays. And as you're seeing in this drive, you can fall on one side of that coin a little bit more as long as you're able to remain effective and efficient. So far, their passing game has dominated here early, and that last pickup leads to a first down. They'll throw again with Purdy. Open man is Jennings. After the catch, he gets that forward for a gain of nine. Second and a yard. to the air is Purdy. He'll tuck it and take off. Timeout 49ers. That is their second. The clock is stopped to 26 seconds until the break. This has been some kind of march downfield now. And they pay it off with six. It's first and goal. Out of the gut. It's Purdy. That one is caught in the back of the end zone. Ricky Hearsaw. Touchdown, San Francisco. What a terrific play at the back of the end zone. Greg, that is so hard to do, but something you did during your career. How do the guys pull that off? Yeah, the key here, Mike, is the concentration to not only see the ball, but then you have to feel the ground. You have to know exactly where you are in the back line of the end zone. And tell you what, this is about as good as it gets. Come down with the ball, two feet in bounds, touchdown. Now Jake Moody for the extra point. He's got it. And the 49ers take a 10-3 lead. time on the clock to put together a drive here at the end of the first half and the kickoff's coming their way now it's Bucky Irving to return 
and he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. A fresh set of downs to work with. It is first down and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he surges forward for a gain of about five. Now the Bucks will take their first time out as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in the opening half. They'll break the huddle. It's second and five. From the gun, it's Mayfield. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. It's rare to see an offense that finds themselves trailing and say, well, their quarterback's been actually one of their biggest bright spots. Usually that doesn't go hand in hand. So it's a little surprising to see him miss a throw like that on a day where he's completed passes at a highly efficient rate. Throwing is Mayfield. The pressure gets there, and down he goes. A sack. And now we'll get a late timeout coming in the waning moments of this second quarter. Here's the punter now, as he is on to punt for Tampa Bay. And that is good coverage by the punt team as they meet him and bring him down. From the 35, it's first and 10. Throwing is Purdy. Going for it all. That's going to be incomplete. They took a shot on the final play. Fair not answered. And that is how this first half will come to an end. All right, Michael, thanks very much as we welcome you into our downtown Orlando studios and the EA Sports Halftime Report. These two teams leaving the tunnel and we'll head out with them. It's time to send it back over to Mike Tirico and Greg Olson. Coach, thanks. This one's still anyone's game. We'll see if we can come out with a hot hand. In the second half, about to get started. Both teams ready to get back at it as we get back underway here on EA Sports. Irving now on the return. Brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drop. Here's the Tampa Bay offense. They're going to take over once more. And look, they've been out of sorts throughout, Greg. They haven't had any answer for this pass rush all game. Yeah, and it's really showing up in the sacks and also just in their ability to prevent any yards, any completions. This has just been a dominant pass defense performance here, and everything starts with the rush. The quarterback's uncomfortable. The clock gets sped up. He's got guys in his face. It's a lot easier to play defensive back and in some of these coverage units when you know that ball's got to come out fast. And right now, they're teeing off and taking advantage of it. They'll run over center with White. And that'll be a pickup of three. They face second down and seven. 
They'll go again with right. He'll get about two. Up from the secondary, Diamador Lenore with the stop. Third and five. To throw is Mayfield. And that is incomplete. They got there in a hurry, didn't they, Mike? I mean, luckily for him, he saw that free rusher coming and at the very least was able to get that ball out to prevent the sack. Kicking time for the Bucks. They'll punch it away. As he'll punch it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch made here. The drive will start at the 23-yard line. Brock Purdy and the NFC champs back out to begin this next drop. And he has been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been picked apart. That is borne out in those impressive numbers. He has been terrific all game long. So here's a first and 10 now. They'll start from the 24. Slot receiver headed right. To throw on first down is Purdy. This one is complete along the sideline. A very nice job to fit that ball in. It'll be a modest game. This is why the timing of these routes is so critical. If that ball is thrown a little bit later, he's unable to keep his feet in bounds, but instead the quarterback is on time and accurate, and the receiver does a nice job not only securing the catch, but ensuring that both feet remain in bounds. Purdy going to give this to Garendo. He was looking for that cutback lane, but it never developed, and he's tracked down behind the line. Great job at that linebacker timing his blitz. He didn't give any indication to the offense that he was coming, and he's able to get through that hole and take the ball carrier down for a loss. Here now, third and five. From the gun, it's Purdy. And this is going to be incomplete. That is great work there making things difficult defensively it'll set up a fourth down throughout this entire game we've really seen this quarterback operate very efficiently not only being able to spread the ball to multiple playmakers mike but really complete a high percentage of his passes so can't let that last incomplete break what's been a really nice rhythm so far and he'll be brought down short return and they'll take over there the Buccaneers offense and their running back getting ready to go back to work and as you take a look at the numbers you have to imagine he was the top conversation in that locker room at halftime they got to find a way to slow him down nothing they've done has worked so far the break the huddle coming up now for first and ten That's Palmer, the man in motion. On first and ten, here's Baker. A short one there to Otten. And he'll be taken down rather swiftly after a gain of just three. It's not the big play they were hoping for, but first down efficiency, staying ahead of the chains, is what every offense is trying to find, and it brings up a manageable second down. Second and seven. Mayfield and that's going to be incomplete coverage was good that time the contact jarring the ball loose and forcing third down it's always a risky decision anytime a quarterback tries to force the ball especially into those tightly contested areas not a lot of daylight not a lot of room for error in this case it just falls simply as an incomplete but as this game unfolds better decisions are going to lead to better results the screen works for 10 yards and a first down. The job of the offensive lineman is the key piece to a successful screenplay. They have to balance this fine line between stopping the defensive lineman from getting to the quarterback too quick, but also let that defensive lineman think he's got a free rush at the quarterback. That's the balance and the timing that made this play so successful, and they're able to pick up the first down. They'll come up first and 10 at the 40. 
Here's a give up the middle with White. Not much. Second and long coming up. Baker to throw. Back to the left side. Caught by McMillan. And he's going to be taken down right at midfield. Seemed like the receiver might ran through like five different open zones, but once he found the one that he liked, where the quarterback was expecting him, you see him do a nice job throttling down, secures the catch, and he's able to pick up a nice game. Here comes Otten in motion. On play action, Mayfield. And he does a nice job to avoid the initial wave. They're going to get him down behind the line. This is where the playmaking ability almost can be a detriment to a running quarterback. They have such confidence in their ability to keep plays alive with their legs that sometimes they hold it just a little bit too long, thinking they can make the next big play. And good job by the defenders tracking him down and took him down for a loss. Last play went the wrong way. It sets up second and long. It's second down and 12. On a zone read, a give to White. And some good blocking. Springing up a gain of nine as we get to third down. It's tough to completely celebrate, Mike, when you don't pick up the first down. But that's a run you will take every single time. I mean, good yardage in a lot of situations, it'll get you the first down, just not here. From the gun on third down, it's Mayfield. And he'll be taken down, but good enough to keep this drive going. It's a first down. The most impressive thing about this drive, Mike, has really just been their efficiency. They've just continued to pick up first downs, fresh sets of downs. We just saw there with that third down conversion. Continue to possess the ball. These opportunities to come away with points continue to go up. That's Palmer, the man in motion. Mayfield to throw it here on first down. That's thrown right side, but incomplete. I think at some point for this quarterback, he has to start looking some other directions. I mean, he's tried to get the ball now to this guy multiple times, and all of them have resulted in incomplete passes. I'm not saying don't throw it to him in the future, but maybe get yourself a couple easy completions elsewhere before you look back in his direction. Throwing on second down, Mayfield. Oh, and this one's going to wind up incomplete. That's one you'd think he'd be able to corral. But he can't find the handle, and it's going to lead to a third down. Even though it doesn't result in a sack, when you dial up the right pressure at the right time, Mike, sometimes that's all it takes to lead to that incompletion. The timing is just a little off between the quarterback and his intended target, and the ball falls incomplete. Quick throw here is complete. And a good job here defensively. They did not let him get away. He's well short of the first down marker. I think this is one of those plays that when the ball carrier watches this back in the film room tomorrow, he's going to be a little frustrated with himself. If he could just have made that one guy miss, he picks up the first down. Instead, he gets brought down short of the sticks. And now they got a fourth down decision to make. He is two for two. That kick is good. And the Buccaneers cut the lead to four. It's 10 to six. And I can tell you firsthand, Mike, when you find yourself trailing in a game, you don't feel very good about coming away with field goals. But in this case, it does get them a little bit closer and cut into this deficit. McLaughlin hit the field goal a moment ago, and now he's back to kick this away. Samuel, going to see what he can do. Good return here. Brings it up to the 33-yard line.
They'll come up here first and ten. Throwing from the gun is Purdy. And he's not going to get away. They track him down. The idea behind man coverage is you want to get up and challenge the receivers. Throw off the timing of the route and the quarterback's progression. And it's a lot easier to play man coverage when you've got guys up front that can rush the passer. And you can see why. Work to do now as they come up on second and long. On the ground is Mason. And he'll only get it to the 26-yard line, setting up second and long. signal and they'll have it just outside their own 20. This drive starts at the 21. It's first and 10. They'll send a tight end in motion right. On first down is Mayfield. This one is caught by Shepard. So that's a nice pickup on a first down throw. It's a gain of eight. The key to good route running, Mike, is deceiving the man covering you into thinking you're doing one thing, and then you change it and do the other. And in this case, he had the defender thinking this was a vertical downfield route. And then next thing you know, he gets to his break point. He breaks in, and that ball's put right on the money for a big pickup. Good work there defensively. It's knocked away and incomplete. The Amador Lenore there defensively to break that one up. And the success of this play, Mike, all comes down to the timing of the defender. You get there a little bit too early, you risk pass interference. You get there a little too late, it's a big pass completion. Timing your hand and playing through the ball is something they work on with these defenders all the time. And next time they throw the ball downfield, I wouldn't be surprised if they target somebody else. Mike, I think we make so much of all these fancy routes, right? The selling, the head fakes, getting in and out of the break. And while that's really important to create separation, that's really more of a man beater. That's when teams want to just play you one-on-one -on -one and you have to beat the defender. Against zone defense, like we saw here, it's a lot more simpler. Understand the concept of the play, understand where the holes in the defense are, and get there and be friendly to the quarterback. And if you're open, stay open. That's NFL route running. That's what the best guys do. They feel to throw on first and 10. And they'll get about four here as he is taken down. So they have these rules for the receivers, Mike. They call them green grass rules. And the idea is if you're running across the field and you're looking at the quarterback, you're going to stay on the run. If you're not looking at the quarterback, that tells him, I'm going to sit in this soft zone. I'm going to what they call punch and pivot and stop. And that tells the quarterback to put the ball on your chest. That nonverbal communication between the receiver and the quarterback, recognizing when you're open, stay open, that's the stuff that makes a lot of these offenses so difficult to defend. It's definitely nice to have one of those bruising, punishing backs to kind of help wear down the defense. But I'll tell you what, you can give me a flat-out electric runner like this guy any day of the week. He can turn on those jets, get in that high gear, and he is gone. Get this complete right side to Otten. And they bring him down inside the 25-yard line. 
Points have certainly been hard to come by in this one today, Mike, but it seems like this drive has been what they've been searching for. A little bit of rhythm, the ability to sustain. Now they got to finish. Now they got to capitalize on these first downs and go finish with six. That's Palmer, the man in motion. Oh, and a short throw there, but it's going to end up incomplete. That's a pass he say he should have had. Instead, he does not, and it brings up second down. Up until that incompletion, they've done a really nice job on this drive, Mike, picking up fresh sets of downs. And typically, throwing the ball on first down is a great way to do it. But now they find themselves in second and ten. Do you keep it in the air and try to get the first down here? Or is the idea to just make third down manageable and take your chances picking up a key third down? Trying to keep this drive moving, but it's third and eight. Out of the shotgun, Mayfield. And he's into a slide to avoid the contact. Does so successfully, and it's a first down. Give him 11 on the scramble, and give them a new set of downs. Those plays are killers for a defense. You think you have the quarterback hemmed in. You think you have a chance for your pass rush to get you off the field. Instead, he gets away, picks up some tough yards, and sets his team up first and goal. That's a nice pickup, bringing it down to the three. So, these two teams take the long walk to the opposite end of the stadium. We've come to the end of the third quarter. Back with more after the break. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Ball at the three, second down, and goal. One more time, it's White. And he won't quite get in. Down to the one, setting up third and goal. They'll try to run with White. Powering forward. He's in. Rashad White. Touchdown, Buccaneers. What a game this has been. Back and forth we go. And that fourth quarter score changes the lead one more time. And we've seen the lead go back and forth, Mike. And now the question is, can they get a stop? Can they find a way defensively to hang on to this lead and get themselves this big win? Now this, an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. It's up and through. And the Bucks go up by a field goal as they lead it 5-3. So now playing with the lead after that fourth quarter touchdown. Time to kick it back the other way. Samuel, going to see what he can do. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. So they come to the line for a first down and 10. They'll stick to the ground. And he'll bring this across the 30-yard line. It's a pickup of four.
Here's second and six. We'll go play action. Purdy. That's complete to Mason. Defensive coordinators preach all the time. Play past defense with vision. It's exactly the case here. They're able to rally to the ball. Keep that to a short game. Big play coming up. This is third down. Shotgun snap to Purdy. He'll look middle and he's got his man complete. And he's going to have the first down. It is a gain of six. Good conversion on third down. Critical third down conversion there, Mike. Now brings up a fresh set of downs. You find yourself here trailing in the fourth quarter. They got to go down and score, and they got to score fast. They'll keep it on the ground. And the woes in the running game continue. We're going to subtract yards there. A loss on the play. You have to wonder if next time does the play caller give his quarterback some options to check out of this play. It was clear before the ball was snapped. This was not a great look for that play call. And you can see the end result. Purdy now on second down. He'll find his tight end, Kittle, on the right side. And they'll get about eight out of that one, but still a little work to do now on third down. As a route runner, once you identify zone coverage like they were playing here, the key is find open space and stay in it. He did a nice job here because that was not a big hole. The quarterback had to put a little extra on that one, and they were able to make the completion. Third and short. Here's Purdy. Short pass taken in by the tight end. Outbreaking routes, Mike, especially outside of the numbers. Everything is about the timing. If you're late with the throw, you're going to be watching that defensive back take that thing the other way for six. First and ten for Purdy. Complete over the middle. George Kittle was the intended target that time. And it'll bring up second down. They're lucky to have avoided this mistake here, Mike. In the fourth quarter with possessions running out, that would have been a critical backbreaking play in this game. And they're going to have second life now after that defender drops the ball. And let's see if they can take advantage of it. To throw once more, it's Purdy. And they're going to bring him down. But there is a penalty marker on the field. Throwing again is Curry. He'll let one go downfield for Jenny. And he's taken down inside the opponent's 35. Here in the fourth quarter, you just can't predict how many possessions you have left. So you can't let any of them go to waste. So far, this has been a fantastic drive. It's a drive that they desperately needed. They continue to throw the ball like that. They got a chance to take a late lead here in the fourth quarter. Set to go now on first and ten. Purdy works out of the pistol. That's deep for the back of the end zone. He was trying to hook up with Debo Samuel that time. And it'll lead to a second down. I can sit up here all day, Mike, and we can talk about the missed throw. But I think a lot of the credit has to go to the pass defense. Not only did they do a good job making it difficult for them to complete the pass, but I think they saved the touchdown along the way. Here's Purdy again. We spent so much time talking about quarterbacks and the special plays that they can make. And, of course, that's a big part of playing quarterback in the NFL. But also, can you avoid the bad plays? Do you know when the fight is over and live to play another down? Don't take that sack. Throw the ball away. 
get back out there on third down and give yourself a chance. They need one right now. Third and long. Out of the gun, here's Purdy. He's got his tight end, Kittle. He is in. George Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. What a catch and run by the tight end as he takes it into the end zone and finishes the play. Greg, you know what that's like. Tight end touchdown. Mike, so often the tight ends are considered to be the possession guys, right? They're the guy you throw it to when you need an easy catch, you need a reliable target. But not this guy. He is a downfield weapon, and he just showed you right there what he's capable of. On is Moody to add the extra point. He knocks it through. And the 49ers make the lead four. It is 17 to 13. So now playing with the lead after that fourth quarter touchdown. Time to kick it back the other way. On the return, here comes Tucker. And he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. First and ten. Slot man in motion right. On first and ten, here's Baker. A short one there to Austin. After the catch, he gets that forward for a gain of nine. The drag route. We used to say this is day one install. Every single offense in the NFL has this sort of route, especially for the tight end position. And depending on the speed and the run after catch ability of the tight end, Sometimes it can lead to some of the biggest gains. They'll run here. Right, first down and much more. A terrific run there, all the way down to the 30-yard line. Big hole up the middle. The interior of this offensive line did a great job clearing some space. The back saw it quick, and he hit it. The next thing you know, he was in the secondary for a big pickup. Short pickup down inside the 30. Here's second and nine. To throw is Mayfield. Who else? Another catch for his favorite title. He'll get about six before he's taken down. They'll come up to third and three. They'll try to run for it. Here's White. And he's going to be brought down right on that yellow line for the official signal. He's got enough for the first down. First down, right back to White. The defense all over this one. They get him behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a couple. This is what every defense in the league is shooting for, Mike. Negative plays. 
That's how you kill drives, force teams to play from behind the sticks. Great job here, taking them down for a loss. Here's a second and 12. One of the tight ends in motion right. A second down throw from Mayfield. They'll get maybe three out of that one, and it's going to set up third down. One of the tight ends motions right. From the gun on third down, it's Mayfield. Picked off by Diamador Lenore. And the Niners are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. All right, Mike, file this play away. If they're able to hold on and pull this game out, we're going to look back on this as the pivotal moment of this game. Oftentimes, it takes that one big moment to sway the outcome of a game and no bigger play than a pick deep inside your own red zone. So here's Brock Purdy and this 49ers offense heading back onto the field. And he has been in control of this offense. Want to run you through some of the action from earlier on. We've got the two touchdown passes, over 200 passing yards. He has been excellent all game long. set of downs to work with. It is first down and ten. Out of the gun. It's Purdy. And he got rid of that one quickly before the receiver even knew what was going on. That's incomplete. They just rushed that decision just a little bit downfield. I mean, it's one thing to trust your guy to make a play in tight coverage, but I think if he was a little bit more patient in his progression... There was an easier throw out there that wouldn't make him have to throw such a tight window ball and put his receiver in a tight spot. A gain of 11 on that one. It's good for a Niners first down. Fourth quarter, you find yourself protecting a one possession lead. It's a fine line, Mike, between do I keep the ball on the ground, continue to work the clock, or stay aggressive, try to extend this lead to a multiple possession game. That's the balance this play caller is dealing with right now. A run, and here's Mason. And that's the way you want to run it on first down. A gain of seven. Here's second and three to go. Here comes Garenda. Trying to find some place to go, but nothing developing. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of one. You know at this point, the defense has to sell out and stop the run. You know exactly what the offense is trying to get accomplished by keeping the ball on the ground. But now the question remains, are they willing to take some risk here and put the ball in the air on third down? Or do they play it safe and keep running the clock by keeping the ball on the ground? This crowd into it now as we get to third down. They'll run. This is Mason. So right out of the two-minute break, we got a timeout used by the defense with a minute 56 to go. to punt this one as they try to play the field position game here protecting a fourth quarter lead this one angles out of bounds and the mark comes inside the 15 yard line they'll come up for first and ten 
They'll drop to throw. That one knocked away and incomplete. Diamador Lenore there defensively to break that one up. Well, at some point, if I'm this quarterback, I think I'm going to start testing somebody else in this secondary. I mean, he's already made his impact felt multiple times today, and it doesn't matter who they line up across from him. Right now, he is completely taking them out of the game. They'll set up the screen to White. Here's a big one, this third down. From the gun, it's Mayfield. He'll find his running back, White. And he's not going to get to the sticks. He'll wind up losing yardage as they mark him short of the first down. And it sets up fourth down. We see teams more and more throw the ball short of the sticks on third down, really for two reasons. One. They're confident that they can pick up the first down with yards after the catch. Two, team's willingness to go for it on fourth down is at an all-time high. They'll go. It's White. And he's going to have a box first down as the defense cannot come up with the big play there. It's a gain of eight on fourth and two. I know it's fourth and short, Mike, but at this distance, you actually have to clear a lane out. You can't just fall forward or push the pile. So that conversion, it's as much of a credit to the blocking as it is to the running back seeing the hole and hitting it. This to the right side, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Jalen McMillan, but what he was looking for there, it's second down. All right, so this is why you get paid the big bucks. These are the possessions as a quarterback you need to deliver for your team. Everybody talks about two-minute. Everybody drills it every single week. But when it comes down to this moment in the game, your quarterback needs to be on point. And after that first down incompletion, it just makes things that much harder. So now after that last incompletion, this brings up a critical third down. But remember, Mike, they don't have to get it all here in one play. They've got third and fourth down. There's no punt. There's no kick. They've got to treat this like it's their final possession of the game, and they've got two downs to extend this drive. That one complete. It's the tight end. Timeout here at Tampa Bay. That is their second as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. This is first and ten. Baker to throw. And he got rid of that one quickly before the receiver even knew what was going on. That's incomplete. Defense has a chance to all but end this game, but they can't secure the interception. And now the offense has new life. But is there enough time? Do they have enough opportunity still to find themselves in position to go try to pull this one out? Throwing on second down, Mayfield. And he's going to be dropped after a pickup of about five. Big play in the game right here. It's third down. Now Mayfield. That is incomplete. Here we go. They're down to what could be their final play. It's fourth down. They desperately needed that one, Mike. Down here late, they've only got a few remaining snaps to go, and it puts all of the pressure of the game now on fourth down. Let's see what play call they have in a gotta-have-it situation. And right now, this quarterback needs to make his best throw in the biggest moment of the game. And they're going to get the first down. They were forced to go for it, and it's going to work out for them.
Out of the shotgun. Mayfield. such a critical area on the field, Mike, between the hash marks and the numbers. Everyone wants to control the middle of the field. Every offense is targeting it. So what does the defense do? They really pack it. So for a quarterback to be able to put this ball out on the perimeter, it just really stresses these defenses, especially in their coverages. So a win here for our visitors, the 49ers. They were forced to travel cross country. They get the early start. 10 a.m. on their body clocks. They're happy now. They come away with the victory.